for these three variables. And we can see that for um, Hassel's, there's someone way out here, and there's someone out here. And the question, of course, well, are these two observations outliers? And I'll tell you, if you use the outlier labeling rule, which I describe in another video, and that's where you multiply the interquartile range by 2.2, and any observation above that or below that is, a, is an outlier, you do have to remove these two observations from the, from the data. And this one here is actually uh, another outlying variable, but it just happens to be uh, this person's score. So this person here is actually the same person as this person. So what we find by looking at the scatter plot is that, and by redoing the analysis by removing the outliers, is that the the basically the entirety of the um, interaction effect is due to outliers and you should always look your, and I'm not pointing my finger at David C. Howell and, and they've got a publication out of this analysis um, and I, there are tons of people that make this error and I've done this error uh, and that is a reminder that we should always check our data for outliers and, and um, it's a pain in the butt at times because we just want to get stuck into it, but you should always check it out. There's, there's some pretty rigorous, way, robust ways of checking for outliers like the outlier labeling rule and I recommend you do that uh, at all occasions and um, that was the main reason I t and I guess that's what one main thing about the scatter plot is that if you use the Aiken and West approach to depicting the nature of a, an interaction effect graphically you lose this you don't ha because it's not being performed on the raw data you're just looking at one standard deviation below the mean one standard deviation above the mean and you're calculating the uh, the, the the points for the based on the regression equation for those um, parameters uh, but when you look at the scatter plot based on the method that I just done I've just done here you actually you're reminded immediately whoa this maybe these are outliers and that's what's even, that's also what's great about doing uh, depicting a regression effect interaction effect using the scatter plot method that I just demonstrated I, I, I'm going to look for a reference for this uh, to be honest I've never seen a reference for doing it this way even though I'm um, I think it's a totally defensible way of doing it, and I'll have to look for one. And if somebody else has seen somebody else doing, uh, depicting a regression effect this way, an interaction effect, please send me the reference so that I know I'm not the only person in the world doing it this way. I suspect I'm not. In fact, maybe I actually read somebody else doing it, and I thought, oh, well, maybe I should do that. Uh, but uh, at the top of my head, I don't know where that is. Anyway, I hope you learned something about interaction effects. It's not that difficult to do it. Uh, we talked about centering, and I'm going to follow this up with another video about whether centering is really that big a deal and whether we have to do it or not. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.